Coming up, the city meets to discuss who should be its next police chief. What do these meetings mean for search? A teacher strike in Oklahoma hits its second day. Teachers filled the state capitol to fight for better pay. We spoke with two teachers who told us what they're fighting for. And a prison sentence given out in the Russia probe. Who is Alex Vanderswan and why is he heading to jail? Find out all that and more right now. Citrus TV News Live at 6 starts with breaking news. We start with some breaking news. One woman is dead in an active shooter at YouTube headquarters. Good evening, I'm Bilat Muhammad. And I'm Sabrina Majori. Ambulances are at the scene and have warned the public to stay clear of the area. Four to five patients are reportedly en route to the hospital as well. We'll have more details as they come in. The budget, is, the budget from the Student Association came out last night and University Union did not receive any funding. This puts events like Juice Jam and Mayfest at risk. UU did not get the money they had hoped for, but there is now time for appeals. If SA had given them money, there would be no room for negotiations. This option gives both groups the ability to meet and talk to figure out the best outcome. Citrus TV got an exclusive statement from UU on the decision. They say, quote, we feel that we have a responsibility to provide versatile, affordable programming to the entire student body. On the heels of last night's decision, we are upset by the finance board's decision and we're doing everything we can to rectify the situation. It is unknown whether or not negotiations are going to happen, but appeals are due by Friday. Citrus TV will keep you updated as more information comes in. Applications are now open for students who want to become health and wellness peer educators. This role includes working with the Office of Health Promotion on Outreach and Education on campus. Peer educators will have the chance to help students with relationships and sexuality and also mental health empowerment. SU is preparing for two leading ladies in the media industry to host separate events this evening. Our Nicole Dementry is live in front of Hendricks Chapel where one of them will speak shortly. Nicole? Thanks, ladies. Yeah, I'm here in front of Hendricks Chapel where MSNBC host and political commentator Joy Ann Reed will shortly take to the stage as part of the university lecture series. Now, it will begin around 7.30 p.m. and she will be speaking on her role in the media um, as a political activist. Now, sports analyst and host Jamel Hill will also be on campus tonight through Alpha Phi Alpha's fraternity's annual speaker forum, Truth Be Told. Hill will be speaking shortly after 7 p.m. in Goldstein Auditorium on, quote, minorities in the media as it relates to both gender and race inequality. Now, Hill left Sports Center in January. She'd come under fire for controversial tweets about President Trump. And I've talked to a few students about both of these ladies being here on campus and the buzz around them. SU senior Omnea Abushnov welcomes both with open arms. She's excited to be able to hear both speak on hot button issues. I just think it's amazing that we can have two great people like that on campus at the same time. It speaks a lot to the university in general and um, what we're capable of. Now, this will be Hill's first time on campus, as well as Reed. And Reed is also notably an SU professor down in Newhouse, New York City. She teaches the race, gender, and media class. Now, Abushnab says it's going to be a tough decision to choose whether she will go see Hill or Joy Reed. But she says she hopes to start with Jamel and move over to Joy Reed um, so she could catch the tail end, as I'm sure many students will. Reporting live from Hendricks Chapel, I'm Nicole Dementry for Citrus TV News. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Nicole. Two seniors in the Whitman School of Management have been named two of the, quote, best and brightest undergraduate majors. Katherine Cummings and Justin Harris join a list of 98 other accomplished seniors across the country. Poets and Quant select students for this feature each year based on people who can make a change in the industry. Hendricks Chapel is set to host a plaque of dedication to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The unveiling will begin tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. on the day that marks the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. The program will kick off in the Shaver Art Building Galleria, which is where the civil rights leader spoke when he came to campus in 1965. Shopping Town Mall has recently lost one of their original tenants. Hair Salon Joseph Anthony & Company has been operating for over 40 years in the mall since it began back in 1975 until today. The salon is among many other retailers like Bath & Body Works that have shut down their stores in DeWitt Shopping Town Mall. The owners of the mall are suspected to present a redesigned plan by the end of the month. 
and St. Joseph's Health is set to pay $1.5 million to have their name on the Onondaga County Amphitheater. The funding for the deal will be split between the concert promoter Live Nation and Onondaga County. The county legislature had originally intended to keep Live Nation share private. State officials decided to release the information prior to county legislature votes to avoid controversy. Syracuse police say a man who crashed on Route 81 was found with over 10 pounds of marijuana. Brandon Cook crashed into light poles and a building on Monday night, sustaining minor injuries. Cook was later taken to the hospital. Police say that they plan to charge him with first-degree criminal possession of marijuana. He will also be charged with traffic and vehicle violations. The dates and venues for the 2018 Apogee Investment Management Golf Championship have been released. The 62nd annual tournament will be held from June 6th through 9th at golf clubs throughout Central New York. The Women's Championship will be played at Cortland Country Club on July 15th and 16th. Registration for the tournament is now open online. Hancock International Airport is continuing to grow. Allegiant Air will start offering non-stop flights between Syracuse and Nashville in June. Services between the two cities will be offered twice a week on Thursday and Sunday. This new se seasonal service will continue until the middle of August. And you know, Sabrina, they say April showers bring May flowers, and it must be for a reason because there was, it wasn't raining hard today, but it was certainly going on all day long. I gotta say, it caught me by surprise a little bit. I was not ready for that, but hopefully you all would be ready because we have Citrus TV weather anchor David Edelstein in studio to give you your full weather forecast. That's right. Right now outside, not really the prettiest of days in Syracuse, although the buildings do look nice. No snow, though. That's because it's just too warm. 38 degrees. It is on and off drizzling and raining throughout the day. And that's really the story across the central New York area. And Syracuse, 38 degrees. Rome and Binghamton also in the high 30s. The rest of the area, low 40s. High in Elmira, though, 45 degrees, but just rainy across the area. The temperatures continue to increase throughout tonight. At 8 p.m. it will be 37 degrees by midnight 42 and then 6 in the morning 53 degrees. We're getting into warmer temperatures for a warmer day tomorrow. That's going to bring some wind with it though. If you take a look at these wind gusts right now it's temperatures with the wind are making it about to the 10 and 20 miles per hour areas. But as you get to 11 p.m., you're going to see those gusts just increase in some spots, even up to 50 or 60 mile an hour winds. So just be careful. What does this mean for tomorrow? Well, we'll let you know in the full weather forecast. A new comedy hotspot has announced its grand opening plans. The National Comedy Center is set to open in Jamestown here in New York this August, just in time for the annual Lucille Ball Comedy Festival. The $50 million Comedy Center will be home to more than 50 interactive exhibits. Doors open on August 1st. And a Rochester judge who hasn't worked in seven months has received an $11,000 raise. The same raise was given to all city court judges outside New York City after 2015 recommendation. Judge Letizia Astacio also got a raise, but hasn't been to work since violating her DWI probation last August. Astacio is currently under investigation from the New York State Commission on Judicial Conduct. And the search for a new Syracuse police chief continues tonight. The first of several public input meetings will be held tonight at the Northside CYO. More meetings will be held throughout the month. Syracuse will have a national search this summer and hopes to find the right candidate for the job by November. Coming up, President Trump's new idea for an immigration border. Stay tuned. And a deal to let refugees through Israel falls through just one day after it was approved. Don't go anywhere. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's Smokey! It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. Next and finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch! Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above-average four-legged homie, and then wham-bam minivan. 
Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. Welcome back. Teachers in Oklahoma walked out for a second straight day today. Our Citrus TV News team took a closer look into the issue to find out what's driving the walkout. Thousands of teachers flooded the Capitol to ask for a raise and more classroom funding. We spoke with teachers on the walkout who pointed out that Oklahoma is last in the country in education spending. We got into this knowing that we weren't going to be wealthy, but we shouldn't have to worry about feeding our children. And that's where many Oklahoma teachers are. I don't know anybody that doesn't have another job. We all have more than one job. Cuts keep being made in Oklahoma schools, and teachers have said they need more resources. The state's proposed raise would only be enough to give one textbook to each student, but teachers say that isn't enough. We don't have enough textbooks to send with the kids uh, home anymore. And, you know, two or three times through the week, they'll make a call on the intercom. We need the textbooks back in the math class, or we need the textbooks back in the history class, because we can't even give our kids textbooks. Bick says her school's books are so old, they don't even mention 9-11. And Wilson says that lawmakers don't care. Oil and gas as our number one resource. And I think our children are our number one resource. And they've got their priorities out of whack. <laughs> Both Bix and Wilson say there's no end in sight to the protest. I think it's going to have to go a couple more days at least, because I think that they're waiting us out. We had a lot of the legislators not show up for work. Our governor wasn't here. Um, this is day two, and I'll be here for day 100 if I have to. We got as many people here today as we did yesterday. So if we can continue to do this, they'll have to do something. And the walkouts seem to be taking effect. Protesters took days off in Kentucky and Arizona today as well. The White House is looking to eliminate what they call, quote, immigration loopholes through a new set of laws. President Trump threatened in a tweet that if these do not go into effect, he would end programs like NAFTA. New laws would include an end to special protections for children traveling alone that are arrested at the border. Along with tighter immigration laws, the president is also, make, is also asking for the military to guard the U.S.-Mexico border until a wall can be built. Reports also say that the White House is looking into whether funds from the military budget can also be used for the wall, a staple of his campaign. The Mueller probe is investigating political consultant and lobbyist Roger Stone for connections to the Julian Assange WikiLeaks. A Wall Street report showed Stone dined with Assange the August before the 2016 presidential election, drawing the attention of the investigation into Russian meddling. Stone denies having connections to WikiLeaks, saying he never received any material from them at all. And a Dutch lawyer with ties to former Trump campaign chairman Rick Gates is the first person to be sentenced in the Mueller probe. Alex van der Zwan will spend 30 days in jail and pay a $20,000 fine for lying to investigators in the Russia investigation. He was, implica he was implicated in the probe when, he was, when his international law firm agreed to cooperate with Mueller about Rick Gates' contacts with Russians. Van der Zwan admitted to lying and avoiding communication with investigation. President Trump is standing by EPA Chief Scott Pruitt as more scandals come to light. Pruitt is facing calls to resign for travel habits and hiring practices. Documents show he spent $168,000 on air travel last year, but emails show there were cheaper options. Both the president and chief of staff John Kelly called Pruitt to reassure him about his job security. However, other White House officials say a resignation wouldn't be surprising. 
And the federal government is facing a lawsuit filed by 24 cities and states across the country. 17 states, 6 cities, and the District of Columbia are suing the government over the citizenship, citizenship question set to be added to the U.S. Census. They say that section addition is unconstitutional and will ultimately skew the results. The state of New York and New York City are both included as plaintiffs in the lawsuit. And Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has announced that he has plans to cancel a country's deal with the UN Refugee Agency. This deal would have resettled a little over 17,000 African migrants living in Israel into Western countries. Netanyahu's sudden reconsideration comes only one day after he announced his approval of the same deal at the nationally televised news conference. Journalists taken hostage in Ecuador have appeared in a new video. The video is addressed to Ecuador's president and relays their captors' demands. In exchange for the hostages' release, the president must release three combatants and end anti-narcotic cooperations with Colombia. The two journalists and a driver were captured while investigating a rise in the drug-fueled violence along Ecuador's northern border. The video suggests that the captives are being held in Colombia. Colombian authorities, however, are denying such a possibility. British Muslims say they are staying strong after anonymous letters were mailed to addresses across the country calling for a day of violence against Muslims. Police are investigating the leaflets that refer to April 3rd as Punish a Muslim Day. Women were encouraged to hide their hijabs and to lock their doors throughout the day. The Muslim Council of Britain has been urging people to quote, keep calm and carry on. After the break, Spotify goes public. Why the music streaming service is moving to Wall Street. And spring may have sprung, but does that mean the snow is gone? David Edelstein breaks down your full forecast right after this. We're leaving. Most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Taking care of a family member can lead to plenty of questions. Fortunately, there's a place to get the answers for them and for you. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. From the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Said it's getting warmer outside throughout the night and into tomorrow. That's going to lead to a high of 53 degrees. Still going to be rainy tomorrow, even possibly some flurries, because tomorrow it's going to be getting colder throughout the night, down to a low of 24 degrees. Those winds are going to be very high. 25 mile an hour winds, 50 mile an hour gusts because of all of this clashing cold and hot air. That's what causes winds. And when you're going between 20 degree temperatures, lower today to higher tomorrow and then lower again tomorrow night, you're going to get a lot of wind gusts. So be careful if you're going outside throughout the day. You just see it drop right off 8 a.m. 53 degrees by noon. It's already dropped to 47 and then by 8 p.m. 34 degrees morning rain turning into a little bit of sun, but then back to precipitation as snow later in the day. You see that on the radar right here, just all of these green spots moving across. That's part of a bigger storm that's really just going across Canada, getting the majority of this snow again, missing Syracuse, whereas yesterday's snowstorm was in the southern areas that hit New Jersey and New York City. This storm just coming across, but some of this tail of the snowstorm is going to come across the Syracuse area tomorrow as it does get colder outside. You see this in the five day forecast tomorrow. Very breezy. Same thing on Friday. Rain and snow throughout the week. The temperatures are really fluctuating 53 degrees to 34, 44, 37 and 36. Will the temperatures even out? Are we going to keep seeing these up and down bounces as this beginning of spring continues into next week and beyond? I'll let you know at the end of the show. Thanks, David. 
Gay dating app Grindr is under fire for sharing its users' HIV status with other companies. The two companies called Localytics and Aptimize were paid to test how the app is used. The dating app spoke out and states users should remember that Grindr is a public forum and users should carefully consider what information they choose to share. Today marks the first day where shares in the music streaming company Spotify will be publicly, publicly traded. Only shares held by the firm's private investors will be sold. The music platform has grown rapidly in the past few years and now has 71 million paying customers. And it's the first day on the market was a success. The company's value is now set at nearly 30 billion. All right, coming up in after the break, we'll take a look at tonight's lacrosse matchup between Syracuse and Hobart. Plus, the Yankees are home in the Big Apple for their first game of the season in New York. All that and more right after this. Now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Welcome back. I'm Chris Benson. Over the weekend, Syracuse men's lacrosse goalkeeper Don Madonna rose to the occasion against number six Notre Dame. The redshirt senior held the Irish to just six goals in the Irish's Oranges 10 6 victory. His performance was so excellent, it caught the attention of the national media. And earlier today, Madonna was named College Lacrosse's National Player of the Year. And while the honor is an individual award, Madonna made sure to recognize his teammates for their effort on Saturday as well. I gotta give a lot of credit to my defense, you know, especially Nick Mellon, really holding one of their best shooters. Two shots, maybe one shot. I didn't see much out of him, so I, I felt really confident with what they were doing to give me, you know, an angle. Plus, it kind of takes a lot of the pressure off of me and lets me focus a little more on communicating, you know, communicating and then getting getting behind the ball. Quick correction, National Player of the Week. But nonetheless, Madonna's been Syracuse's rock of consistency this entire year, especially during this seven-week gauntlet of ranked opponents that the Orange has faced. The goalkeeper's made 10 or more saves in all but two of the games that he's played in. Cuse needs another strong outing from Madonna to avoid a letdown in tonight's battle for the Cal Krause Simmons Trophy. Syracuse has won 26 of its last 29 matchups against Hobart since the trophy's inauguration in 1986. And despite the recent lopsidedness, SU's given the statesmen the respect that this 100-year rivalry most certainly has earned. Uh, you know, it's an important game. You know, we've got uh, Roy Simmons Jr. will be up in the box watching. Uh, Roy Simmons III will be on the sidelines. Uh, you've got Ryan Simmons will be on the field, uh, you know, wearing his grandfather's number. So it's a, it's a big day for us and the, and the Simmons family. Uh, here we are in the Roy Simmons Center, uh, so a lot of history here, and it just helps us bring a little bit more importance to the game. You know, it's going there is a blast. Their students are right along the fence. They, you know, they, they get kind of rowdy. Um, they, they bring it. They travel well. They bring a good crowd here, and uh, you know, it's 
it's always a battle every year, and it, it's just fun. It, it really is a lot of fun, just the atmosphere of it all. After the game, Citrus TV has you covered with highlights and analysis on Orange Press Pass. Tune in to OTN at 11 o'clock for live post-game coverage. It's OPP. You won't want to miss it. Elsewhere, last, night was, last week was one to remember for Syracuse tennis. After its victory against ACC rival Pittsburgh on Friday, the Orange notched an enormous win against number three Georgia Tech. The effort catapulted Cuse into the national top 25 rankings for just the second time in school history. The other coming in March of 2016. All right, well, harsh weather in April is nothing new for us here in Syracuse, but the Yankees got a taste of the Salt City's temperamental temperature this past week when opening day was postponed because of snow. So the reopening of opening day at Yankee Stadium was this afternoon, and the fans had a chance to welcome last year's impressive squad back to the Big Apple. The Bombers matchup with the Rays is currently in progress. New York leads the Tampa Bay 4-1 to one with D.D. Gregorius's three-run shot in the bottom of the third inning, propelling New York ahead. All right, well, it was announced earlier today that the summer sensation that swept upstate New York will be back in action once again. Bayheim's Army, the Syracuse-based basketball team that made it all the way to the semifinals of the basketball tournament, has qualified for this year's event. The basketball tournament is a popular nationwide single elimination tournament, but it's not all just for fun and bragging rights. Last year's tournament featured several former pros, with the winning team receiving $2 million dollars for a grand prize, what what will people do to have good television? I heard the event was great, actually. I heard it was a really good time. Sounds great, sounds great, Chris. So there's this big game coming up tonight. Who do you think is going to win? Well, Syracuse and Hobart is a historic rivalry, but as of late, it's really swung in Syracuse's favor. This year is no different. I'd say 12 to 9 in that kind of range. It could be a little bit tighter than we expect because it is a rivalry game and because Syracuse's offense I just see that it has a chance to sputter because they don't move the ball around very well. I, I still predict that Syracuse would come out on top, though. Yeah, certainly one of the highlights of lacrosse season. Chris, Absolutely. thanks so much. We'll be right back. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's going to flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Got a quarter? You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Citrus TV News. A second ago, we were saying, will these temperatures even out? Well, by the end of next week, they will. They should be in the 50s, but before that, just kind of altering in the 40s. But something I want to take a look at right now, there's actually a graph for this. We're going to take a look actually at a bad hair day graph. And you can see in Syracuse, kind of in that pathway where over today and tomorrow and the next few days, you're going to have a frizz factor, a high frizz factor. If you have a bad hair day, well, that's what you should expect. So not for me because I've got shorter hair, really not a problem, but for anyone else. All right, and that's all for tonight. For all of us here at Citrus TV, I'm Gilat Malamud. And I'm Sabrina Majori. Have a great night.